Bundy's Garage, Bundy here. Hey, excuse my mess over here on the table. I've been doing a bunch of different projects, but uh, today I want to do a review on Casual GTX Magnatech. I actually saw a video on this online and I was pretty intrigued by it. It claims that uh, the molecules inside of this actually cling on to the metal. Somehow it's magnetic, as it was what I want to say. Maybe it's not, I don't know. Uh, in their video, they state that uh, you could have this stuff in an engine and 100 years from now, it'll still be clinging to pieces of metal on the engine. Now, the interesting thing is, um, I know a lot of uh, engines that are aluminum, the block and the heads, even the pistons are now aluminum. Um, typically on aluminum block, they are sleeved with a uh, steel sleeve, so it might actually stick to the steel sleeve if it is magnetic. I don't know how it works. If anybody from Castro is watching this video, a comment below would be great on how this stuff actually works. Some of the claims to fame on the Castrol GTX Magnatech. Castrol GTX Magnatech also delivers superior wear protection on critical engine parts. Unsurpassed level of protection against viscosity breakdown. Unique synthetic technology to fight against harmful sludge buildup. And high level, high level of fuel economy based on US industry standards. So right now in the vehicle that I'm gonna put this in, I have a premium synthetic oil that I'm using in it. So I'll, I'll actually put up some figures of the uh, MPG, the miles per gallon that I have right now with uh, the synthetic oil I'm using in the vehicle right now. And then after using the Castrol GTX Magnatech, I will actually uh, put, up, put up the MPG and see if uh, it's gone up or down. In no way am I um, paid by Castrol. I went out and bought this by myself at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm not paid by them. This is not an endorsement for Castrol GTX. Uh, like I said, I saw this video online. It was pretty intrigued by it. Some of the reviews I read on Amazon also state that Pete guys have used it and it's quieted their uh, cams down, their lifters down quite a bit. So uh, I'm just excited to see, uh, to see what this stuff can do. But without further ado, let me uh, pour it into a glass so you can actually see the color of this stuff into a jar. So there you go, looks like thick honey. It smells like regular motor oil. I know on some of the newer oils that I'm, that I'm using, this, the oil actually smells very, very sweet, very slippery. One of the tests they showed on the video, they actually would look like a magnet. They put oil on the magnet and then they took it to a cell phone, the screen of a cell phone and uh, rubbed it on the, on the glass of the cell phone. And he said, look, it doesn't scratch the uh, glass on the cell phone. So stay tuned and we'll, uh, I'll show you the results from using uh, Castrol GTX Magnatech. So the preliminary uh, results from the uh, Castrol uh, Magnatech seem pretty positive. Uh, stay tuned. At the end, I'll show you the results of uh, miles per gallon MPG. See if it's gone up or gone down since using the Magnatech. But uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys, I'm actually going to play one of the commercials here, and uh, then I'm going to pause the video, or yeah, pause their video, I should say, a Castro Magnatech video, and uh, then we'll uh, talk about it. A couple of key points. I'm not ragging on the oil. Uh, not at all. I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on it. Anybody from Castro is, is listening to this, um, some of the things you might want to address uh, if you if you make another promotional video. But uh, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at this video. And like I said, I'll, I'll pause the video to uh, I'll pause their video to uh, insert my own little comment into um, into how they could have made it better. Some of the questions that I have as well. Cars play a major role in our lives. But how many of us give a second thought to what goes on under the bonnet when we start the engine? All that rubbing and that pressing can lead to a phenomenon called abrasion. The material is lost from these critical surfaces. And once that material is lost, the engine will never... Okay, so they're talking about abrasion and within the engine. Obviously, they're talking about uh, cylinder rub or cams. Uh, cams rubbing and that is one of the reasons why I put magnets on my oil filters 
because no matter what kind of oil you use, oil you use, oil, I can talk today, oil you, oil you use, there's always going to be that abrasion, some friction. You can't get rid of friction 100%. You can minimize it, but you can't get rid of it. So there will be small metal, metal particles flowing through your oil system. That being said, that is why I put magnets on my oil filters. And I'll put a uh, link in the description below of where you can see a video of where I actually do that. Because I don't want those metal, metal particles, no matter how small, um, rubbing in the oiling system anywhere. I want, the, I want to capture those particles of metal as soon as possible and get them out of the, out of the oiling system so that they're not causing more abrasion because basically it's just a compounding effect. You know, you, you start having a little bit of wear, gets into the oil, that abrasion that's already there is actually gonna lead to more abrasion, more abrasion just compounds upon itself. Run quite as well again. On a global level, engine wear is one of the greatest motoring problems today. For almost 20 years, Castrol have been working on a solution. What we've been doing at Castrol is working on very special kinds of molecules. Molecules that give oil the power to cling to critical parts, even when your engine is turned off. Ready to protect from the moment you turn the key. The Magnetech Intelligent molecules cling so tenaciously that if you left them there 100 years, the molecules would still be there ready to protect. The molecules cling so tenaciously that they'll be there after 100 years. Uh, that's that sounds bitching and all and really cool, but I don't understand how they can know that if Magnatech has not been around for 100 years. Do they have a vehicle that they've used this 100 years ago and it's still sitting on there? Talking to some more guys I know have seen a presentation on this as well. It's not, I thought when I first saw it, I thought it'd be magnetic. It's not, it's something on the molecular level that's actually sticking to the, uh, sticking to the metal parts. But there is also a company called Lucas and they make, you know, fuel stabilizers. They make transmission stop leak. They make a product called uh, uh, Lucas Oil Stabilizer. They have one for synthetic and non-synthetic. Uh, the one for non-synthetic comes in a white bottle. The one for synthetic comes in a blue labeled bottle. It makes the oil cling better to moving metal parts inside the engine. Uh, I talked to uh, an engine rebuilder one time, this is probably 10 years ago now, but he swore by Lucas due to the fact that he had opened up the oil pan on an engine and drained all the oil out and he came back two days later and the oil was still draining out. Some drips of oil were still coming out because the engine had Lucas oil stabilizer in it and it had you know, caused the engine oil to stay up inside the engine and, and coat those critical parts. So, I mean, I like what, what uh, Castrol is saying, but there are products on the market that may emulate what they're trying to do. Like they said, it, it'll be there for 100 years. You actually have to add Lucas Oil Stabilizer every single time you do an oil change. So, and, I, and they never made the claim of, of it sticking around for the next 100 years either. And what you can see is real evidence of, of scratches, of abrasive wear. It's just not evident in the Magnatech cam. The lab tests look promising. But how does Castrol Magnatech perform in cars on the roads? The best people to ask are the professionals, car mechanics. First of all, the conditions for driving in Moscow are really tough. All those freezing temperatures and constant traffic jams. That's why we recommend Castrol Magnatech to our customers and we tell our friends and we use it ourselves because it has features that protect the engine. Castrol Magnatech? Well, constantly changing lanes and braking suddenly in traffic jams and then pulling off again is a serious problem for your engine. But adding Castrol Magnatech reduces the wear and tear. But not to rag on these mechanics, I'm sure they're great mechanics. Um, one of my, uh, 
I don't want to say one of my dreams, but one of my aspirations, you could say, would be to travel to a different country and interview a uh, interview a mechanic and see what their take is on uh, on mechanics in America, what tools they use. Um, you know, do me- new mechanics in other countries find the same problems and issues that mechanics in America find? So I think it's cool they interviewed, you know, looks like they interviewed maybe somebody, a mechanic from Korea, I can't tell. Sorry if I get that wrong. Looks like they also interviewed somebody from uh, Russia. But uh, I'm sure they're getting paid for stating that fact that they use Castrol. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, everybody's got to make money. I would love to see Castrol rip apart an engine. Start with this. Start with two identical cars with the same exact engine. Pull the engines apart, measure all the tolerances inside the engine, put 500,000 miles on it, one with Castrol Magnatech, the other one quality synthetic motor oil. We'll rip them apart after the, the test, you know, change the oil at specific intervals at the same time, and see if there is actually anywhere difference <clears throat> inside the two engines. That's what I would love to see. I would love to see them do that. Somebody do it. Uh, Mobile One did this on a BMW. I think they did a million miles. I'll put a link in the description below as well. But uh, if Castro could take it, two identical cars, same engine, same oil change inter- intervals, same oil filter, and then you know put miles on it, rip them apart, measure the uh, tolerances beforehand, and measure them after, that would be that would be very impressive. What about our drivers? Can they see the difference Castrol Magnatec makes? There's clearly a difference. This part is rough. And this part is smooth. Well, these tangent parts I've got, one is really smooth. It's, if I touch it, I can, it just, my finger just slips over it. The other one is really, um, well, it's ridges and I can actually feel my finger jerking over it. Looking at the two cameras, this one on the right feels very smooth, while the one on the left feels very rough. And when I use my fingernail to scrape them, I can hear the one on the left is basically worn down, while the one on the right seems brand new. And if it looks like they gave them part of a cam, maybe a cam lobe, and they, you know they're giving it to these individuals to feel the feel the metal surface and they're saying yeah one feels smooth one feels rough they need to show where those cams came from what engine they came from what the intervals were on that engine what oil was used in that engine i want to i'm i'm a naysayer dude i don't i don't believe anything oh that poor dog um i don't believe anybody i question everything i trust no one and for them just throw those engine parts out yeah, it's kind of, kind of, maybe a little, looks a little deceiving. I don't want to say it's deceiving, looks a little deceiving. Like, they, like I said, they should have, they should have mentioned where they got those engine parts from, what kind of car it came out of, how many miles were on that, and, uh, and state a little bit more facts about where they got those engine parts from. If you're still not convinced, Tony has a final demonstration, which will leave you in no doubt about Castrol Magnatech's protective power. I can show you the effect that Castrol's intelligent molecules have very easily. I've got some abrasive here which I've coated with the actual intelligent molecules that are used in Magnatech. And if I take something, perhaps people might recognize, a smartphone, I can attempt to abrade the surface of the smartphone with the abrasive, but the intelligent molecules protect the phone and no abrasion has taken place. What's more, there's another greater... What is that abrasive that they just used? What is that little... I don't. Is that a sanding block? Is that a piece of wood? Is it a piece of metal? I wish they had showed them applying the Magnatech, the Castrol Magnatech, onto that abrasive that they're quote-unquote calling. Uh... I mean, that's a cool trick and everything. I don't want to say trick. Maybe they actually did it. I don't know. But tell me what the abrasive is so I can try to repeat it. I have a busted cell phone at home and I could, you know, get some Castrol Magnatech and stick it on quote unquote abrasive and slide it across the phone screen and see if it scratches it or not. Let me be able to, uh, you know, duplicate the test results at least. Advantage to switching to Castrol Magnatech. 
It doesn't really take any time to start feeling the benefits of Magnatech when you use it. it, it it's very interesting because even in a case, if I draw another graph, I plot wear and time here. When we've tested these molecules, then even if you've used a poor oil and the wear is accumulated quite swiftly, if you change to Magnatech, you slow that wear rate dramatically. So the benefit of Castrol Magnatech is that it offers instant protection from the moment you turn the key. Giving us all peace of mind, knowing our car engines are well protected. I'm very pleased with this story. I think it's a good story and, and I think we're all very happy here that we've been able to work on technologies that bring these kind of advantages straight away. It's very rewarding to look at the results that we generate here and realize that we've created a solution to the problem of abrasive wear in engines all around the globe. And that solution is available to drivers everywhere. Okay, so now just going into the uh, the credits of making the making the video. These videos that Castro has put out are very interesting. And in, in another video, they show the fact that uh, um, in the warm up period, most uh, in the first 20 minutes in the warm up period of a car engine being cold to when it reaches. Uh, operating temperature for the oil, that's when the most wear occurs. That's what they state in another film. And I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. I, this is how I feel about it. And I'm not, I'm not saying Castrol Magnatech is bad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm gonna show you the results at the end of this video of the mile per, mile per gallon results of the car that I actually I actually put this into here in America the EPA is uh, is is clamping down on on auto manufacturers they want these vehicles to be able to get 50 60 miles to the gallon by 2020 uh, the new push is into diesel engines because I believe and manufacturers truly believe that they can reach those kinds of miles per gallon with a diesel engine um, that's why you see direct direct injection also coming to play now, because it offer it offers um, better fuel economy. So the whole goal of a of a of a vehicle, what I what, how do I how do I say this in a in a in a not in a fact but kind of a statement? I pre warm my vehicles. I'll actually go out there. I'll turn the vehicle on five, 10 minutes before I actually leave somewhere. Why do I do this? Because I want the engine oil to be warm to flowing the best rate that it can flow through the engine to prevent as least amount of damage to the cylinders, to the pistons, to the rings, to the walls of the pistons that can, you know, that can happen. I want to minimize that the best of my ability. And old, uh, old school mechanics, and maybe some even new school mechanics feel the same way. What a lot of manufacturers say and other videos I've seen out on YouTube say, drive the vehicle. Drive the vehicle to get it up to operating temperature. And where I believe this is coming from is the EPA. They have put so many monitors on these vehicles, so many smog restrictions on these vehicles, that they want the vehicle to get up to operating temperature. They want it to get up to operating temperature as fast as they can, as fast as they can, because the vehicle goes into what is called a closed loop system. There's an open loop system in the cars. There's a closed loop system. At, when the, when a vehicle hits a closed loop system, it is at its I want to say not maximum efficiency, but it's at its least potential for polluting into the environment. 
Also, you're going to see you're, you're seeing um, more and more oils that are thinner and thinner. They they're almost like water, like a zero W, you know, zero W10, zero W20 that are synthetics. The government has put so many limitations on on how these cars need to perform and how they need to meet emission standards that the only way that manufacturers are able to come up or achieve those miles per gallon is using a thinner oil. I believe that even though the manufacturer is saying that's what you need to use in a vehicle, that truly isn't the oil that needs to be used for that vehicle. Let me explain myself before you attack me and try to stab me and kill me. I say that because they need to reach a specific point in miles per gallon with the government for the car to be released or the car to be, you know, accepted into the general public. They're going to do that by any means necessary. They're going to use more plastic on cars, plastic intakes where they used to be metal. They're going to use thinner gauge wire inside of electrical systems. Uh, they're going to use aluminum uh, body panels in trucks. Ford was the one that first started doing that. But they're going to try to reduce the weight any way they can. Those readings of the miles per gallon, you have to use a, a, a thin oil that's going to allow the engine to, you know, move as easily and as freely as possible. In real world, real, real, I can talk, real world environments, like I'm driving up in snow right now and it's 36 degrees out. I don't think a 010 is the kind of oil that you want to be running up in the mountains. Even though your car may call for it, that's not necessarily the oil that you should put in there. And I know, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but that being said, you need to use the oil and have common sense that is best for your vehicle and, and what it really needs. Are you, are you going to be desert racing? Are you going to be up in the mountains? Are you going to be off-roading in the mountains? Are you going to be by the ocean? Are you going to be in mostly hot weather? Are you going to be mostly in cold weather? Here in Southern California, we don't get a lot of cold weather. There's two seasons here. There's winter and summer. And we're in winter, there's no fall or spring. It's either 100 degrees out, 110 degrees out, or it's 50 at night. So we don't need an oil that, you know, is used for cold weather operations here. So anyways, that was my rant. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with that. Uh, like I said, stay tuned. I'll show you the results of the Castrol uh, Magnatech that I've used. Looks promising so far, but I'll post them, uh, post them right here. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. You can, uh, if you can, if you found this video helpful or any of my other videos helpful, please consider subscribing to Bundy's Garage on YouTube. Uh, at the end of the video, at the end of this video, you uh, see more uh, more options for other videos. So if you can or if you want, stay tuned. You can watch more of my videos. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Bundy's Garage. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.